From various glitches to being able to complete the game in only 1 minute and 56 seconds, despite being intended to take 5 hours on average to complete, to the extremely bad AI. It's safe to say this game was very flawed, and the devs tried to hide it. But let's explore just how speedrunners exposed Hello Neighbor 2, showing how broken it really was. The speedrunning didn't start when the full game was out, it began way earlier. On the 7th of April 2022, they released Hello Neighbor 2 Beta Playtest to the public on Steam. It also came with an option to pre-order the full game, and if I remember correctly, it was around £35 or $38, which seemed a bit excessive, but people let them off as they had promised amazing things with their new AI technology for the characters. The beta itself showcased the town to the player, and different locations you could visit, such as the bakery or Mr. Peterson's old house, but the day after it had released, people had already found exploits and glitches to complete the game insanely fast. From what I could see, someone called Mistad was the first person to speedrun it with a ridiculous time of only 29 seconds. All they did was head over to Mr. Peterson's new home, go up to the roof, and glitch right through, which then prompted the game to end by saying to be continued, and that was all. Despite these glitches, some people said that it was normal for a beta, and expected that the final game would have all of these fixed. But oh how wrong they were. <laughs> On the 6th of December 2022, Hello Neighbor 2 was fully released, alongside the playable demo to anyone who wasn't quite sure if they wanted to purchase it. As far as the demo goes, I'm not sure Tiny Build, the company behind it, were doing the best job of convincing someone to buy it because there was still a mound of glitches in the game. So in the demo, your main goal was to go and visit the police officer named Keith Nielsen, who is patrolling Mr. Peterson, the neighbor's old house. You need to gain access to the basement, but there are many locks on the door, and you need to go around and complete puzzles whilst trying to keep out of the policeman's sight. The the problem with this was that you could easily get access to the basement simply by crouching and spamming jump forward, clipping you right through the door, and yeah, that would conclude the demo. <laughs> Not to mention that this new AI wasn't even that smart, more on that in a bit. Now let's talk about the absolute mess that was the full game Hello Neighbor 2. It was still very broken, I'd argue it was even more broken than the beta. In the intro, I mentioned that this 5 hour game was able to only be beaten in 1 minute and 56 seconds, so let me walk you through exactly how this is possible and just show you how really unfinished this game was. You start off on a barn. This is supposed to be a tutorial room to teach you, you know, the mechanics and things like that. But you can easily bypass this just by glitching out of the building. To do this, you simply go in the minivan, go to the end of it, shift crouch, and then spam to go through the roof. From here, you're able to go around to the front of the barn and just trigger the cutscene. You then spawn in the office, but there's no need to move. You can just hit escape and load last save. Loading your last save is basically going to be the main thing you do. It's just like a load last save simulator at this point. After you've done that, you should spawn outside Mr. Peterson's old house, and once you enter, quickly make your way to the basement door. Shift crouch, and spam jump, clipping you right through, just like in the beta. So yeah, they didn't even bother fixing that. Once you're in the basement, you simply grab the newspaper, skip the cutscene, grab the key, then hit load last save. Once you've spawned, grab the shovel, hit the button, hit it again, then now you're at the bakery. Now, since the AI is so broken, you should have no problem running past this woman, stealing her key and obtaining the fire extinguisher, which is the most godly item in the game. Now it's time to skip all of the bakery puzzles and grab the necessary key for unlocking the next house. For this, just crouch near the shelf and when you go to get up from crouching, you just use the fire extinguisher to propel yourself backwards, putting you right through the table and your head in the cash register. From here, keep turning around until you see the grab icon. Take the key and load your last save. Once you're in the house, head up to the top floor floor into this specific wall. Crouch up beside the table, then jump and propel yourself right through the wall, and then grab the painting. Hit the button, and now it's time to grab another key. In this pile of soil is where it's located. Again, you just need to use your extinguisher and crouch to perform this glitch and gain access. Now, hit the button, and you should be at the back of the house. Head up to the top floor and unlock the library's door. Next, just put the code 1135, and then, yeah, grab the camera. Loading the last save, you should now be at the mayor's home. Using the extinguisher again, you can get home 
high enough in the air to reach the roof's ledge. Then you can clip right through the window and the wall to get you in the necessary room to the next key. Hit the button and now you're back at the house where you want to head up to the top floor and essentially float in the air using the godly item. And once you've reached the attic door, prepare yourself right up to clip through it. Once through, throw the fire extinguisher in the cage so that you have it after the cutscene, which is essential. Then grab the key and unlock the door. Finally, once you've skipped that cutscene, grab the item again, then crouch and clip right through the big wall here. Once you begin to fall, make sure you use the fire extinguisher to catch your fall. And you definitely need to time this well because if you don't, you would die. And then when you respawn, you won't have the extinguisher. So you have to start all over again. Now, all that's left to do is go around to the front entrance and trigger the ending cutscene. And that's it. That's the game done in one minute 56. <laughs> now, I want you to keep in mind that the game was going for almost $40 at this point. So no wonder why people were annoyed at the devs, especially the fact that the AI was so broken, even though they had specifically promised it would be amazing. And that was the main selling point of the game. They even got caught out for it by removing the description on the game before it released, which stated how good the AI would be, showing that they were lying from the start and just trying to hype it all up. To call this sequel a disappointment would be an understatement. Although as of today, they have fixed most of the bugs, but that doesn't excuse the fact that for weeks after the release, it was severely broken and they tried to charge a fortune for it. And so that basically sums up the broken mess of the Hello Neighbor sequel and how speedrunners exposed their poorly executed game. And as always, thank you for watching.